just going to open up in prayer this morning. Um, Val, would you open up in prayer, please? Thank you. Father, thank you for this amazing morning. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come here and spend time together in your presence. I pray a blessing on everyone who contributes to this service this morning, and that it be your words, your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Well, we're just going to start worshiping Jesus this morning.
quality measures. Okay, tonight we've got One Valley, um, which is from 4 o'clock for a cuppa, and that's down at the church... Maui ACC. Maui ACC, which is above... Oh, okay. Yeah, that's it. Thanks, John. Um, so if you can make it to that, that's, they're always awesome. Yeah. Yeah. They have so much fun. Um, and <coughs> if you can knit and fall and you'd like to make scarves, beads or gloves, please see Joan, so you can knit them for the homeless. Okay, so now we're just going to take up the offering, please. If the ushers would like to...
Um, you can all be seated. Thank you. Okay, so Diana and her little gorgeous daughter um, are going to do a bit of an item here on this slide, Lily. Yeah. Um, they're going to do an item.
That's when the kingdom of God is at its very yeah. best. Yeah. Not when people are squabbling over positions or anything like that. The Son of Man came, Jesus came, and gave us this example, this wonderful example of serving. And he gave his life on the cross because that was the only way that sin could be dealt with. So if, if our Lord Jesus gave his life on the cross for us so that we would have new life, and we celebrate that with these communion elements, isn't it the case that we all should have that same attitude, an attitude of, of wanting to serve and wanting to be a blessing to the body of Christ, just as Jesus gave his life to bring it into existence in the first place. Amen. What an amazing sacrifice that Jesus made, but what an amazing result that right throughout the ages, everyone who trusts in Jesus would have a new life and eternal life. Amen. Would somebody please like to give thanks for the bread which represents the broken body of our Lord Jesus? Lord, we thank you that Jesus did what he did with him. Lord, he wasn't robbed, he wasn't coerced, but Father, he went to the cross on our behalf willingly. Lord, we thank you that we can remember that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's take this bread and eat remembering the body of Jesus which was given on the cross for us. <coughs> There's still some words on the um, on the lectern here, and it says the verse, all sufficient sacrifice, <laughs> so freely given, Amen. such a price, Amen. brought our redemption, heaven's grace <coughs> swing wide. Isn't that awesome? Thank you. Thank you. The, the price was the blood of Jesus, the death of Jesus on the cross. Somebody please like to give thanks for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us so thoroughly from yeah. every sin. Jesus' name, thank you for the cross, what you did for us. We were guilty, Lord, but you did it on our behalf. And we thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's drink together in remembrance of what he's done for us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Wait just for a few moments. Maybe there's some prophetic words that need to come out. It's just not hurry this moment. Thank you, Jesus. Behold, I am the Lord. I am the one. Give it life. No one can take it. But God, in his mercy, as he looks down, he sees his people. service as we um, take up the glasses. Um, there's no children's church going out today. No, that's right. Um, but I just want to encourage you. We, we sang about breaking every chain. 
and we've talked about the power that's in the blood of Jesus. This is this is your opportunity today to get the victory, to to um, to overcome those things that have had you bound in your life. And as the service goes on, we hear that there's a bit of a drama, I think, that's coming up, and then the preaching of the word. I just invite you to reach out to Jesus for your answer, for your need, for your situation, because Jesus is the one. He's the answer. Hallelujah. Thank you. Okay, we're going to have a little play and the girls are going to come and get ready. I've got a couple of little things to do. Uh, of course, when we take over, the messy start begins. I just want to congratulate our young people for the commitment, for what they've put into this day, for the rehearsals. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to thank Diana and Nathan and Kelly too for coaching these kids uh, to do the music. Um, yeah, Zeke, that was your first time playing in public. by Max Licardo. So the Wemex were a small wooden people. All the wooden people were carved by a woodworker named Eli. And in his workshop, he sat on a hill overlooking their village. Each Wemex was different. Some had big noses, others had large eyes. Some were tall and some were short. And some wore hats and some wore coats, but all were made by the woodcarver and all lived in the village. And all day, every day, the Wemmicks did the same thing. They gave each other stickers. Each Wemmick had a box of golden star stickers and a box of grey dot stickers. Up and down the streets, all day, all over the city, people spent their days sticking stars and dots on one another. The pretty ones, those with smooth wood and fine paint, always got stars. But if the wood was rough or the paint chipped, the Wemmicks gave dots. The talented ones got stars too. high above their heads and jump over tall boxes. Still others knew big words or they could sing pretty songs. 
Everyone gave them stars. Some women had stars all over them. And every time they got a star, it made them feel so good. It made them want to do something else and get another star. <laughs> Punchinello was one of these women. <laughs> he tried to jump high like the others, but he always fell. And when he fell, the others would gather around and give him dots. Sometimes when he fell, he would get scratched. So the people would give him dots for getting scratched. Then when he tried to explain why he fell, he would say something silly and the Webex would give him more dots. <laughs> After a while, he had so many dots that he didn't want to go outside. He was afraid he'd do something dumb and that he'd forget his hat or, or he'd step in a puddle and, and people would give him another dot just to rub it in. In fact, he had so many grey dots that some people would come up and give him a grey dot just for no reason at all. <laughs> He deserves lots of dots, the wooden people would agree. <laughs> He's not a good wooden person. By the end of the month, we are going to have a fair. Whoever has the most stars is going to get a big award. For Punchinello, he believed what they said about the grey dots. I'm not a good woman, he would say. A few times he went outside and he hung around other women who had lots of dots. He felt better around them. But one day, he met a woman that was unlike any of the other women. It wasn't that people didn't try to give her stickers, it's just that the stickers didn't stick. Some of the Lemmicks admired Lucia for having no dots, so they would run up and give her a star, but it would fall off, and others would look down on her for having no stars, and they would try and give her a dot, but the dot wouldn't stick either. So Punchinello drew up all of his courage and went to see Eli, the woodmaker. This is scary. I shouldn't be here. Punchinello, I've been waiting for you. You've been waiting for me? But how do you know me? I know you because I made you. You made me? Yes. Looks like you have some marks though. I didn't mean to get these marks, Eli. Truly, I didn't. I don't mind what the other women think of you, and neither should you. All that matters is what I think, and I think you're very special. You think I'm special? Yes, you are mine, I made you, and that's what matters to me. But why don't the dots and stars stick on, stick on Lucy like they do to all the other women? The stickers only stick if you let them. I still don't get it. The less you care about the stickers, the less they stick. Come and see me every day. Go home and think about what I said. But remember, you are special because I made you. Maybe I am special. So I want us all to remember, just like Eli said, 
to punch in our lotto. That we are special, not because of what other people say about us, but we are special because God made us, he is our creator, and what he says about us is true. And you are special, and you are loved. Jesus say I am. God spoke 
over his son Jesus and he said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And you know, he has chosen each and every one of us to be his sons and daughters and be in his kingdom. And he loves us and he is pleased with his children. We struggle and we fall, we're a bit of a punchinello from time to time. But he doesn't come and stick dots on us for failing. In fact, he doesn't even call it failing. He just calls it. Let's learn together and go on to the next step. Let's work on this. <coughs> we are his children, his adopted family. And we need to align our thoughts and align our words with God's thoughts and God's words. The Bible says that God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts and his ways higher than our ways. So we need to keep going to him and learning from him. And he says that. Come to me and learn of me. You know, he wants us to learn about who he is, his character, his nature. Because it's that very nature he's placed in us. So as we get to know more about who God is, we get to know more about who we are. We need to be in the presence of the Father. The Bible tells us that the devil is the accuser of the brethren. Right? And he wants to accuse us and say stuff over us, lie to us. You know, he's a liar and a thief and a cheat, a robber. You know, he's, the Bible says he's like a prowling lion and he's roaring. He's, he's just this, you know, he reminds me of Scar from The Lion King. And he just goes around and he speaks these untruths. Do you really think you're so special? Do you think you are really worthy? Did God really say that? I think we've heard that line before. Yeah. You know, he's sneaky. And he tries to get in to our thoughts. And he tries to convince us we are unworthy. We're not really that valued. But we've got to remember he is a liar. And when we hear those yeah. things, the Bible says, in Christ Jesus, there is now no condemnation. And so we need to be assured that we are in Christ and Christ is in us. Jesus Christ in me, the hope of glory. That's who I am. And I get to shine out the love and goodness and grace of God in my life because it's Jesus that lives in me. The Bible tells us that this accuser, he is out to get us. And it reminded me of the story in the Bible about David and Goliath. Now you remember, lots of us will remember that story, but some of us may not have heard that before. And so I'm just going to tell a bit of that story. Because just like the devil's are the accuser of the brethren, Goliath, he was like a great big giant of a man, and he was a Philistine, and he belonged to the Philistine army. And he was so big and so scary that he used to come out. The Israelites were camped on one side of the valley, on the mountainside, and the Philistines were camped on the other side of the valley. And every day, morning and at night, Goliath would stomp out and come out with his big boots and his big head, and he'd start to say, you know, um, who's going to come and fight me? Come on, you Israelites, you send out your biggest, fiercest, strongest man to come and fight me. Who would dare to come and fight me? And every morning and every night, he'd shout out and taunt the Israelites and ask them to come and fight him. So, the trouble is, the Israelites shook in their boots every time he came out. They were so scared of this giant because, not just to fight him, but because the consequences were huge. Because Goliath said, you come and fight me, and if I win the battle, if I win the fight, all of you Israelites have to come and be the servants of the Philistines. And if the Israelite wins the fight, then the Philistines all have to be servants of the Israelites. And so 
there were huge consequences as a result of this battle. But mainly, I think the Israelites, they used to get together around, well, not the water cooler, but you know, around where they had their chairs. <laughs> And they'd be talking over their meal and say, Who's, you know, is anyone going to go out? Oh, not me. I've got a wife and kids at home. You know, he's like so big. How are we going to do this? We need to come up with some strategy. Who's going to go out and fight him? And day after day for 40 days, he came out and he was accusing the brethren. He was uh, yelling out this thing against the people of God. Then one day... It was actually quite a habit of, of David to come backwards and forwards and bring food and supplies to his brothers. He had a whole bunch of big brothers who were in the army. But David was just a little shepherd boy and he used to look after the sheep out on the mountainside. And it was while he was out on the mountainside, I believe David spent a lot of time, just like we were talking about today, in the presence of God. And David... He might have just been a young little boy, but he had a heart, the heart like God's heart. And he was brave, and, and <coughs> if any wild animals, lions, bears, it says in the Bible, if any wild animals would come and try and get the sheep, he'd get out his, his staff his, and his stones, and he would fight off the lions and fight off the bears and keep his sheep safe. So when he turned up this day, he came and he was asking what was going on. Just as he arrived with his cheese and bread and dates and provisions for his brothers, Goliath came out. They were stomping across the ground and saying, who's going to come and fight me? So David said, who's going to go? Who's going to go? I'm here right in time for the fight. Who's going to go and take on this giant? You know, how dare he come out and speak against God's people like that? But his brother said, look, you cheeky little upstart. You've got no idea what you're talking about. You just scowl on home, go back to your sheep. And David kept persisting and saying, do you know what? If no one else will take him on, I'll take him on. I can do this. Come on. I fought the lion. I fought the bear. I can take on this guy. And they said, go home. But in the meantime... King Saul heard about David. And King Saul said, send, send the kid over here. So David went over to King Saul, and King Saul said, so what's all this about? And David said, well, who is this guy that he can come and defy the armies of the Most High God? Who does he think he is? Let me go out. I haven't got, I'm not afraid of him. Let me go out. And King Saul gave in to David. I thought, here's this king. Let's face it, none of the rest of his army of seasoned soldiers would go out against Goliath. And so he said to David, okay, but, you know, here's some armour, here's a helmet. Here's a... And David said, can't wear this stuff. You know, it's like <laughs> oversized, too big for me. No, I've got a strategy. It's okay. I know what I'll do. And he said, I'm going to go out and fight this giant. And so, so David did. And he went down, he took, the Bible says, he took his staff and he went down to the river and he gathered five stones. And he had five stones and he put those stones in his shepherd's bag. And then he went out to face Goliath. And Goliath looks at this little ruddy-faced, red-haired youth. Reminds me a bit of Jackson. <laughs> Coming out against him. Could you imagine, like, this nine-foot guy and 16-year-old Jackson fronting up to, like, you know, Hulk Hogan, but bigger. You know? It's just crazy. But Goliath was so insulted and he said, who is this? You know, what is this that you come at me with sticks for crying out loud? I'm going to take you and feed you to the birds. And David just knew who he was. Yeah. And he said, no, today, Goliath, I come 
in the name of the Lord God of Israel. I know who I am. I know whose I am. And it's his name I come in. And today, Goliath, you're going to die. Today I'm going to kill you and I'm going to take your head. <laughs> and before Goliath could even think about what David was saying, you know, he came out, he had this javelin that was like nine feet tall or something and the head of it weighed all these tons and, you know, big helmet on his head and he had even like a, a, a shield that was so big he had to have another guy to carry it, you know. This is what David was coming against. And Goliath's just there thinking, what do I do? Just stomp on him, squash him like a gnat. What's going to happen? But before Goliath could even think about it, David reached into his shepherd's bag and pulled a stone out. And he put that stone in his sling and he sized it up. Let go of that stone and whack, hit that giant there in the middle of his head. And the giant whack, came down on the ground. And David wasn't finished yet because, you know, David only had the stick and had the stones, but what did he say? He was going to take that giant's head? Well, he did. He went and took that giant's own enormous sword and cut off his enormous head and went back to the big duck that day. Amen. Now, I love that story. I love that story. And today, what I want to do is Remind us of who we are in Christ. Remind us of our bag of stones. Do you know what? You and I have a bag of stones. That every time the enemy comes against us, every time he starts to accuse us and say things against us, we've got this bag of stones that we can put in our little sling and chuck at the devil. So I've given a few people around this room some Bible verses. And I'd like you just to stand up and no, don't chuck them at me. <laughs> I'm going to get you to, to read them out. And so I might just call out the verse and if you've got that verse, you yell out the scripture. Now what I've done is I actually only gave people the Bible verse and they had to look it up because you know what? We don't go to our Bible often enough. Yeah. We don't go to our shepherd's bag. We don't pull out our stones often enough. So I've given you some scriptures. So the first one we're going to have is Philippians 4.13. Has someone got that? If no one's got it, it might be the one I had left over. <laughs> no, if you've got it, just read it out. No one's got that one? That says, I can things through Christ who strengthens me. Alright, has someone got 1 Peter 2.9? Alright, read out. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's Amen. Sorry, we're just someone's on Bluetooth and it's coming over our life. <laughs> Thank you, Josiah. Right. Who's got a, so we are chosen by God, we are a holy people chosen by God. That's right. How about Ephesians 2 10? <coughs> Ephesians 2 10? Someone got that? Yes. Yeah. It says, well, for we are what he has met us. Created to Jesus in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared before it before it to be a way of life. Amen. 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 All right. How about 2 Corinthians 5.17? Yep. Okay, someone's just going to read that. Thank you. Then one who is in Christ is a new creation. Amen. And you knew that off by heart. Thank you very much. Amen. Romans 8, 17. Yeah, in all things, we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. Thank you, Amen. Yeah. All right, what about Ephesians 1, 7? Oh, no, no one's got that. I mean, I'm not saying you've done three Romans. Um, have I?
you want to talk a bit more about that, why don't you come forward right here now at the conclusion of this service and we will pray with you and we will introduce you to our Heavenly Father. You can become part of His family and we'd love to become part of our family too. And the other thing I want to pray for today, if you're struggling with some of that stuff, if you've had that accuser in your ear talking things to you, saying things to you that are not the truth, and you're doing a bit of a Goliath battle at the moment, I invite you to come out here too. And I'm just going to wait here and maybe Steve and a few other people can wait, and Lynn and a few people can pray, and we will be here to pray with you, go into battle with you, and, uh, and deal with that Goliath in your life today. So don't leave without dealing with that thing today. But right now, let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you call us into your presence and we can come into your presence, Lord, any time, any time of the day to be refreshed and renewed and reminded of who we are and of who you are. Lord, we thank you for this day and we thank you for this beautiful body of Christ that we are a part of. And I pray that today, as we go out from this place, Lord, we will know your presence with us wherever we go, yes, that we will go forth in your strength and your power, yes, Lord, and in the, in the company and presence of the yes, Holy Spirit yes, wherever yes. we go and 